but anyway I'll show you real quick how the whole system works I did in my previous video but it's kind of neat to know how it works when it's all up and running so let's pretend again that we're running off the batteries uh, or I mean the solar is charging it right now because that's the way it's configured uh, we're running it off inverter but we decide that it's a snowy day we're not getting a lot of power <sighs> Now I know it's going to be loud, so I'll try and talk over it, but once the generator is on, now the house is running off the generator, but you'll see, if I press this, that goes off, and now the AC charger will automatically start charging. It'll do that whether you're on the inverter or generator going into the house. So now this is charging the batteries, and you can either manually shut it off, and it goes right back to solar, or if the generator runs out of fuel. then it automatically transfers back over. That way, if you are running the generator, if my mother-in-law is running the generator, let's try and get a little bit of power and the generator fails or runs out of fuel or whatever the case is, it will automatically reconnect the solar panels to the charge controller, uh, or reconnect the solar panel charge controller to the batteries and disconnect the AC charger. So the batteries are always getting a charge no matter what the circumstance. And the reason I did that is just to kind of make it dummy proof. Um, you know, I don't want it to be too many switches and stuff like that, but so I'll do another video tomorrow where I mount the panels and get those up and working. And uh, I don't know who's filling in this trench, but God, it's deep. That's all, that's all I got. Long day and I'm dirty and nasty and I want to go home. I'm so tired. Okay, it's day two uh, up here on site of installing the solar system. Uh, and I've been working since probably about nine o'clock this morning and it's probably 11.30 or 12. I'll show you what I've done. If you've watched uh, before here earlier in this video, yesterday you'd see there was a, you'd remember there was a trench here, a two foot deep by one foot wide trench. And I filled most of it in and I tried to get the trench filled in while it was still cool out here cause it gets hot. Um, so I just have this little stretch to go, but I filled all of this in, all the way, and then I even did a little bit behind the shed. I stopped right here because of the sun, but I got that filled in while it was shady. So I took a break from that and decided to work on the solar panels here. I'll show you kind of how far along I am. I got the rack hung. So far, I've got one more panel to hang, then I've got to cinch everything up, and then I gotta start working on connectors. And I've never done these connectors before, so I hope I got the right tools and pieces and stuff. But you can see my handy conduit bending that I attempted with a heat gun. If that ain't a trip hazard, I don't know what is, but the wire comes up to this head right here. I'm gonna silicone some of that in just to try and keep all the moisture out. And then the back of the panel rack, you can see I just made it out of super strut. I put these two pieces, in hindsight, I probably would have taken these and instead of facing the channels to each other, I would have done it the other way. But I had some more mounting options. And one thing I'm worried about with this two post rack system is the twist effect that I think it might have in a good wind. So I'm gonna try and brace it across the back in a few places to see if I can clamp it down and keep it from twisting. But I'll show you how I've installed these. And so I just used typical Unistrut bracketing on here. I used these L brackets. I wanted it to be adjustable for winter, spring, summer, fall, all that stuff. Um, the sun is straight up above us. And it actually, from where the panels are at, the sun tracks all the way up here and then sets right now behind these trees. And so these panels are gonna almost be facing straight up, I think. 
just because of how far north we are in the summer. But, um, but all I'm doing on this is I've got one bolt on the inside of the panel. I've spaced it with a rubber washer that you can see behind there, and then it's just a washer bolt nut. And I've done that across. I had to actually drill holes in the strut. Uh, and I did all this at my house. You can see on the top I marked them. So I've got panel one, two, three, and four, although I noticed that panel one and four are gonna be swapped, but I think everything is symmetrical. It's not gonna matter. But I had all this mocked up at my house so that I uh, could just come up here and assemble it, which is exactly what's going on and what's happening. So when this is done, I probably ought to do some sort of diagonal support uh, on the solar panel piece to keep it from um, skewing, I guess, left or right. The panel should do actually a good job. Now that I hear myself say that, the panel should do a good job holding that in place. Once I get them all cinched up, that thing shouldn't tweak at all. And then the bottom is what I'm worried about. This brace that's down here was just temporary for spacing while I concreted it in the ground. So all that's going to come off. And then I'll re-bracket the top. But i got to try and find the center of gravity too because when these panels are kind of pointing straight up... Um, you know, I want all the weight to be transferring straight down on the posts and not pulling them, you know, forward. Anyway, that's what I've got so far. Um, I haven't fired anything up in here yet, but I mean, since yesterday, since earlier in this video, but, but I will test everything here in a bit and get it all plugged in and dialed in. But uh, all right, so I'm going to get back to work while it's not too hot and I'll be back. Thanks. Okay, this is another update. Since my last uh, segment, I spent a lot of time on this solar array. It's up. It looks really flat, it looks good. But just as I suspected, it's got a wiggle. It's got a, a sort of a twist or a torque. You can kind of see it. And so what I did is I added a brace across the unistrut here and then I did one at the top where it wiggles more it's reduced it quite a bit but I'm worried about a big windstorm causing this thing to really move um, but it's done I mean if it becomes a problem I don't know we'll have to figure out another way to brace it or something or maybe have a third leg go into the ground or something like that I don't know but anyway now I'm going to get to the wiring, and then uh, I think I'm just about out of here. So, just get another close shot of how I braced everything, just in case anybody wants to improve on this wiggling mess. And it comes down, and I tried to distribute as much weight straight down as possible, but I clearly have some lateral pull. I could have raised the panels a little higher. That's all for now. All right, let me get wiring this thing so I can get out of here.